Things happen. <laughs> All right. So we have our numbers, right? We have 230, 175, and 75. So at this juncture, does everybody see with some guesstimates like how much you should be eating of any particular energy substrate or macro? So you got you got some numbers associated with this stuff? Mm -hmm. Numbers, but not a clear sense of what that would look like in food. All right. But this is what we're about to do right here. <laughs> All right. So carbs, 230, protein, 175, and fat, 75. All right. So I eat five meals a day. So you already have a sheet of, like, a breakdown, exactly what I was doing yesterday. So we're just going to divide this into five meals. So if we say 230 divided by 5, that's 46 grams of carbs in each meal. That's a lot more manageable. Yeah, that's like two and a half slices of bread, a bagel, a little bit more than a cup of pasta. How do you like Elizabeth's like encyclopedia that. in her head about I like do. Like I 46 grams of carbs in <laughs> Yeah. What carbs do you eat? Do you eat potatoes, sweet potatoes, <coughs> rice, beans? Beans are carbs. And protein and fiber. And protein and fiber. Yeah. Yeah. So like, so look at those things that you are eating, right? Just about every food contains. So like even like if you look at fat-free Greek yogurt, right? You know it doesn't have any fat. It's got a lot of protein in it. But you know what else? It also has a fair amount of carbs in it. Right? So like a cup of Greek yogurt, you make fun of me here, has nine grams of carbs in it. <laughs> I use this number thing. I really like numbers. So these these macros are, they're everywhere. You know, and uh, and so just and you don't need to track these things forever, right? That's the other thing. I keep tracking it because I enjoy it. Right? <laughs> I really I like doing this math, right? And I know that most people don't. You know, like I'm also someone that like if I have you know like five minutes before I'm gonna start a class. Right, like I'll get on my phone on my fitness pal and start like playing around with my macros and be like, what do I have to do to eat popcorn at the movie later? You know, like because <laughs> like these like these things are possible. You know, it's this isn't this isn't about restriction. It's just about making things fit. Well, you do it right, like Elizabeth said. Popcorn feeds into your goals. Now we're now we're getting into a powerful place. What? <laughs> I can I can have a hot dog and it can help me. Hot dogs will not help you that much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if hot dogs will help you. Uh, I do eat chicken sausage, but yeah. Uh, all right. And so then for my protein, it's it would be 35 grams a meal. <clears throat> and then fat would be 15 grams a meal. That's a good amount of fat. And we do. I find that we um, really scare ourselves, one, with carbs, two, with fat, and three, what we consider healthy and unhealthy foods. It's all just food, you guys. It's all just food. It's all just fuel. You can still put mayonnaise in your tuna, right? <laughs> like, it's fine, you know? Like, you can eat the rice or the pasta. It's just fuel. We are aiming to get more minimally processed foods in than processed foods. And that's also where that bulk's gonna come from, right? If you're in this and you're like, okay, you know, like, I get 2,300 calories a day, you know, that is one meal from Burgerville. Or that is like 10 pounds of like produce, grains, and meat, right? So it's like, what are you gonna choose? Maybe you'll choose a mix of the two, you know, but it, um, there are, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, there are foods that are um, more dense 
than others. It's not the word. I'm oh, nutrient for. dense versus calorie dense. <coughs> yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Um, it's in there somewhere. Maybe it'll come by the end of this, and maybe I'll just post it on Facebook. <laughs> all right. All right. So I didn't have to write those numbers that many times in a row. <laughs> I'm just going to write all the same numbers down the line. So basically, every meal, right, it would be a goal of about 46 grams of carbs, about 35 grams of protein, and about 15 grams of fat. All right. So what that would look like, that would... So let's say I, uh, what would a regular dinner be like for you at home? Potatoes and green beans, right there. Because green beans have a little bit of protein in it, right? Your salmon is mostly protein, and it's got a little bit of fat. So, I don't know, maybe I'll put some butter on those potatoes. Maybe some sour cream, right? <laughs> maybe you want to cook that salmon in olive oil, right? Maybe you want to have an avocado on the side. I don't know olive oil, I like. Or, ah, wait, here, how about this? Let's throw some pesto on that salmon, right? Yeah, get some pine nuts in there and some olive oil, over romano cheese, right? So this would probably be mm, a cup of potatoes, half a cup of green beans, four ounce, four or five ounces of salmon, and two tablespoons of pesto, right? So we'll say one point five cups here, five ounces, and two tablespoons. And have a green salad. And don't fucking count it. Because like who we, like there's like not really there's like two grams of carbs in it, you know. Look at that. The macro queen just said don't even count it. <laughs> <laughs> don't even count. Well it's green salad. If yeah. you're gonna put some bacon and cheese and croutons on that salad, then count it. But uh yeah. No, that's right. Like don't don't major in the minors. Yeah. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Put that in the backpack. Major in the minor. Who's that? I was all like, ooh. Smart Rooney. All right. So, do you feel me here? Is it? Yeah. I've got a question, and I, yeah. I don't know. How do I know that 15 tablespoons of pesto is going to equal, or two tablespoons of pesto is going to equal 15 grams? So when you, the question, this is, I have that question yeah. too. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, mean, I can't figure out everybody's macros. All right, so when you, uh, so let's say you buy a uh, thing of pesto from Pasta Works, right? It will have that nutrition information on it, right? It'll say, uh, you know, like the serving size is one tablespoon and, you know, each tablespoon has eight grams of fat in it, right? So you can look, if you are if you have something that has a label, that's really easy. Um, or my fitness pal. So this is really where, you know, logging in the beginning comes in handy because I've been doing this a long time. Right, and so I can say uh, about two tablespoons will give me about 15 grams of fat. So right. if you're making it homemade, you basically have to create the recipe. You and can create that recipe, yeah. and yeah, yeah, and that is something that like I have in my fitness pal. Mm -hmm. One of the options here yeah. is you can create a recipe, and I have a few <laughs> <laughs> that I have created. Right. So like something that I make uh, probably once a month, I make this green soup, right? And it is broccoli, zucchini, green lentils, and like onion and chicken broth. 
cook it all up, and then I blend it. It is so good with like a ham sandwich. <laughs> so, but so this is something that I make a lot. So I created the recipe in my fitness pal, right? I put in all of my ingredients. I divided it. I don't even. So you say like however many. So there's ten servings in it. I think it was ten cups, right? So I have my ten servings, and in each serving of that soup, I have 27 grams of carbs and 14 grams of protein. Right? And that's and there's no fat in that, you know. So that's, you have your numbers there. And really, like with inputting stuff, it's always it's like the first time that you put it in, it's gonna be time consuming, you know. But then it's already there and you just have to like click that button, right? So how do you modify the nutrition uh, to match your personal on my fitness goals? Goals? Okay, goals on my fitness health, you can have a macronutrient goal. So that's your nutrition goal. Yeah, so if you're on my fitness pal, if you go to the goals tab under the menu, and then go to your calorie, carb, protein, and fat goals. So I have my calories in, and then you can adjust those percentages on the macros. Boom. They only do it by fives, though, so. Oh, do they? Yeah, so sorry if you want 33% of everything, it's not going to work out. I've tried. Just did. <laughs> Just because I like to think. <laughs> so it's trial and error. To answer your question, Joe, like eventually you'll start to understand that it's the olive oil that makes the calories, and then, you know, or if you're going to add nuts into your thing, like pretty soon you'll hone in on what's actually changing your calorie and your macro. Uh, ratios, but for the, the first while you're weighing things, you're measuring, you're inputting the data, so you're confirming back what you're what you're putting into things, and that's going to create trust in yourself and your in your process that so you can start to, to to grow your skill set. Yeah, and I, I really do recommend weighing and measuring things at first. If you're someone that's like, there's no way it's going to happen, I'm not doing it. With Precision Nutrition, we have a great infographic of estimating serving sizes, and we can email that to you. You might even already have it in your email, you know. And also to know that all of these numbers are estimates, right? When you're looking at the uh, nutrition content on things, it's something like there's a 20% margin of error, right? Or so, more. Or more, right? So like we're using these numbers to keep ourselves on track. All right, but we're but we're not married to these numbers, right? So like, if you eat two hundred, if I eat two hundred and fifty carbs in a day, right? I don't sweat it because I'm like, it could be a margin of error. Or it could just actually be twenty extra carbs, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> you know, like it's really these all of these things are estimates, you know. So don't get hung up on hitting each number exactly. You know, and you know, it's so like, like I said, you know, so it's like, because I do happen to know that that pesto is eight grams of fat in a tablespoon, you know, so I'm like, okay, it is 16 grams of fat. I'm not going to be sitting there and like shaving off just a little <laughs> bit just to make it 15. Take that extra gram, go for it, you know, but like also, you know, so it's like avocado. I put avocado in my smoothies. I get those, the little... You know the teeny tiny avocados? They call them like gator eggs at Fred Meyer. Mm -hmm. Trader Joe's calls them teeny tiny avocados. <laughs> I put half of one in a smoothie, you know? And so like that is sometimes it's three quarters of an ounce and sometimes it's just over an ounce. You know, my husband's like, are you gonna eat that whole half? And I'm like, hell yes, I'm going to eat that whole half of an avocado. <laughs> because I know that over the week, it's gonna balance out, right? It's fluid, not absolute. Yes. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? So is this help that create some clarity when you, when you broke it down from the big numbers to the by meal, like what your meals are supposed to look like? So we have an set, some sense like, oh, I could, it's possible for me to eat that. Okay. Uh, because sometimes when you look at these numbers, you're going to shoot them from them, it, it seems intimidating. You break down into small bites. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> you know what I mean? <clears throat> I've just yeah. realized I'm doing it all wrong. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> well, and how so? 
Well, I mean, I've been tracking my food, mm -hmm. and I mean, I'm not, I'm not eating enough. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, so, like, I'm not. so like you've already got like step one down. Yeah. So you are doing it right. You know, you're yeah. already tracking your food. You know, and like and that right there, you know, like that's that's really like where we want to start with this. And that is just to see where you're at. Yeah, I mean like one day, I mean I took in nine hundred and ninety two calories. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and just that's like, not enough. I mean clearly. <laughs> Better than zero. It is better than zero. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> I feel like there's layers and layers of discovery in this. So yeah. compare this to exercise. You know, I remember when I took Pilates, the first six months, it was just about getting in the position, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what we experience here when we join this gym. First thing is like knowing what we eat and then start learning how to kind of classify it. Yeah. And then pretty soon we just experiment and we experiment and we track it a little bit. And I love eating out on tracking. Yeah. And then after you do that, you don't even if you if you get busy and you can't geek out on tracking, it's like you're on autopilot. Yeah. Yeah. And you kind of know. And every once in a while you reset and you go. But there's layers of discovery here, and people have to determine what layer they need to be at to start, and then do that for a while and get good and experiment, and then take it to the next level and then experiment and then you take it to the next level and the, the my fitness pal's come a long way actually mm -hmm. i've been used it in years and i've looked at it a lot of this work is is, is done for you there it's pretty yeah. good yeah and it's in not terms perfect. of it isn't perfect but in terms of tracking tools my fitness pal has a really large library of things in it and they also you can scan barcodes and it's got all that nutrition information there like I am, it has. I've been getting um, the meals from Fit Foods down on the Southwest Waterfront. We have some of their cards. Plug, plug. Um, <laughs> but um, but all of those meals are already in there, so I can just put in, you know, Daily Harvest, Caveman lunch, which I recommend. <laughs> Steak and cauliflower and asparagus. It's really nice. Not nearly enough carbs, so I have to eat some rice. Food. But it's besides the fact. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's like all, all the numbers are already right there. You know, I also, um, because for me, it's like the things that I need to make simple. My number one overwhelming thing is washing dishes. I don't have a dishwasher and I have two teenagers. There are a lot of dishes in my home, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I do some food prep at home, but I also, I get meals from the Fit Foods and I also I order smoothies and soups from Daily Harvest. And uh, yeah, like Daily Harvest, you know, like I put in my yesterday I had a vanilla chai smoothie, which was delicious. And it had cauliflower and zucchini in it. I'd never put cauliflower in a smoothie before. I was really skeptical, but it was so good that even my friend that I had with me, and we're like smelling it and looking <laughs> at it, you know, we're like, do we actually want to drink this? He wanted, uh, he tasted it first. What a champ. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it was really good. You couldn't even tell that there was cauliflower in there. But uh, uh, yeah, so like, so there are things that we can like do to help make this easier and to figure out what it is in it that you find most overwhelming and then and try to work around that. Question about that piece of like measuring stuff, like what do you do when it's not something that you can barcode, it's not something you prepped yourself. Like somebody else made it for you, or you go out to eat at a restaurant, yeah, yeah. or whatever. How does that work? Well then I'll kind of, I'll just kind of guesstimate. You know, that it's, you know, like, um, tomato sauce is usually tomato sauce, you know? And like, if I'm out to eat, I'm like, they probably put sugar and fat in here. Um, and so then I'll like err on the side of more sugar and fat there, you know, and also thinking that those servings are going to be much bigger than if we were at home. No. Yeah, yeah, and um, and same thing with like at people's houses. Like, well, I'll just I'll just estimate. Yeah. 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 So I don't know if this side is like you. We all know portion size is like a protein size of your palm. You know, that kind of thing. How does that play into this? Say you don't have a scale with you, 
because like my palm is going to be a different size than your palm, <laughs> a different size than someone else's Absolutely palm. right, and that's it's where like, that estimating comes in, you know. And so like for you, like I would say probably a palm and a half of protein with every meal, right? Because like you also have different needs than me, right? Well, yeah, so, like I have health issues, so mm -hmm. I actually instead of doing the thirty percent carbs, I'm lowering mm -hmm. mine to twenty five just because I know I need less carbs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. And I raise my protein. <laughs> yeah. So you can play with it a little bit. You can play with it a little bit. Yeah. Is with the five meals, I broke out what's more useful to my lifestyle. Like I am not a morning person. So my breakfast is probably gonna be ten percent, whereas yeah. my ten o'clock snack maybe twenty percent. Yeah. And yeah. lunch and dinner thirty percent and kind of my evening thing ten percent. So Absolutely. Is it okay to play with things like that? Totally. Yeah, yeah. And I really I look at my daily numbers. You know, because like I'm in meetings all, all day long. There's no way I can stop and say, "Okay, today I'm gonna eat my." Yeah, you're like, hang on, you guys. Right I'm now. gonna go microwave some fish, right? Because yeah. you're like trying to make some friends, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. No, and, um, no, and that's like I was saying. Like we do, we have people in here that you know that like RNs that work 12-hour shifts. You know, and so like that woman, like she touched, she'll eat like two protein bars over the 12 hours, you know, and then like when she gets off of work, she eats more nutrient dense food to try and get in a little bit closer to her numbers, you know, but like working three 12 hour shifts a week, like on those days she's working, she's not hitting those numbers. <laughs> you look like you have a question there. No. No. Okay. <laughs> Just a, uh, somebody that Elizabeth briefly mentioned that um, uh, calories, or calorie uh, nutrition information on labels is an estimate. They get those numbers by putting potatoes or wheat or whatever it is in a barometric chamber and setting it on fire, and the energy that comes off that food, the, that's the kcal measurement. The problem is, is every day in that bar barometric chamber, the same potato burns differently. What? <clears throat> and then they put athletes in barometric chambers. And burn them! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and put them on exercise bikes. So you spend an entire day at rest in a barometric chamber. And then, and then doing high intensity interval training, then doing cardio. And what they found is the BMR estimates, the energy expenditures from high intensity interval training, they're off by 30% too. So we're talking about not really having concrete data, what's coming in, concrete data, what's coming out. These are guidelines. At the beginning, Elizabeth said, make a 150 cal calorie adjustment and then see what your body does with it. Then make the next adjustment. Make the next adjustment. Because, you know, it, it, we're not trying to, like, who said it's, it's, it's not absolute. It's fluid, it's fluid. Not, fluid, not absolute. It's not like this is exactly what's biologically happening in your body. <laughs> but, you gotta start somewhere. And this is the plan. You're creating a plan and giving yourself time and opportunity to make adjustments and make this customized to yourself. Uh, <clears throat> this is a strategy that I use for uh, figuring out how much I care about what I'm eating. Um, like if uh, Karia asks, like, if you're, out eat, if you're going out to eat, how do you estimate who's making what? You can just look at it if it's something like it's homemade. At a restaurant, I'm just like, oh, cheap meal. Like, because I don't know what's in that stuff. Like, you know, and, and, like I'm not going to guess. So, but I can get away with it because if you, if you look at your plan, so I have a plan just like, just like you went through, I have a plan as well. And I cook by, I do meal prep and then I order uh, extra meals from the Fit Foods. So I've got like 30 meals of my week planned. So I know if I'm, if I'm just trying to hit 90%, I've got three or four cheat meals in there that I don't even care about what the macros are. I don't care about what the calories are. So, you know, uh, I'm gonna have breakfast with a friend, don't care, gonna go to happy hour, uh, Tuesday, don't care. And then, so I've got some X's pre-planned and if I make a mistake, I just clean it up later and get back, and get back on track. That way I'm not going insane about uh, feeling guilty about not knowing what was in my food or, or those things. And this is the other part too is, if you're compliant, to, the, to your, the habits that you're working on, to the goals that you're working on, then if your measurements, if your measurements are moving the way you want them to, you don't have to change anything. You're, you just keep sticking with the plan. You stick with the plan until you stop getting what you want, and the <coughs> goals change. Boom. And how often do you pivot that plan? Like, would you try, because you mentioned like for a week and then pivot again, and then a week and then pivot well, again. Is that like a reasonable time? With it. 
um, to just to see really where I'm at with it. So like right now, I'm measuring um, my results mostly by my performance in the gym, right? So like if I feel like I'm stalling on performance, and I haven't been, I've had like three solid months where I've been feeling like I'm getting stronger, I've been getting more reps at heavier weight, I've got PRs, because I'm like, I'm gonna stick with this plan. <laughs> right? You know, but like, but there was like, so before I started this plan, I, uh, I was eating about 1,900 calories a day. I had done a cut um, that, Last fall, I did a cut, and I um, and I mean, like, all my performance numbers were going down. So I was like, maybe I need to adjust this. So like I did, I didn't go straight from 1900 to 2300. I actually I changed it by 100 calories a week until I like I started like feeling better, more recovered, because like I was very sore all the time. I wasn't sleeping. The performance well. metrics are internal, right? Like how I feel, energy, vitality, performance. Uh, but the answer to your question is, if you're compliant and you're not getting where you want to go, 10 to 14 days, make an adjustment. So if you're, if you're hitting it and you're hitting all your, your numbers and nothing's happening, then you adjust up or down, reverse diet or diet. So 150 extra calories, 150 fewer. Um, but don't keep going back and forth. You gotta, you gotta pick a direction and go. So to tell you, in, if, you're, if you're adding calories and you start to gain, gain fat, and that's not your goal, then you then you need to move the other direction. But let your body tell you what's happening, because you may sit there and add calories for a while and keep losing weight, or you may add calories for a couple weeks in a row and then you start gaining weight, and you're like, okay, this is where my body's at today. Yeah. But the guardrails are constantly moving, and you've got to reach out and find them. And when they move, and you're going to hold on to them until they move again, and then you're going to stop and you're going to reach out and find them. You have to be patient with your body as those changes happen. Right, and that's if you're compliant. And I put this on one, one of the sheets, it's on there, that we're aiming for 90% compliance, all right? And so if you're at least 90% compliant, that's when, and you're not getting the results you want, that's when you can make a change. If you're like 50% compliant, and you're like, why am I still getting weight? Work on that compliance. <laughs> <laughs> and then see what happens. <laughs> and that brings us to another point. If you're too ambitious with your plan, then and you're like 50% is pretty rough. Like if you're like 70%, give yourself a couple weeks to get ramped up. But if you can't get any part of your plan in place, that's the wrong plan. Right? So you gotta have a simpler, you gotta start somewhere that's closer to where you're at so you can be successful. Because even a small amount of success will change you. You just have to let your, let it be small for a while. Yeah, and so like with choosing that that first goal work on the compliance for that one goal, right? And then add that next step. So don't measure your compliance by the big picture when you're working on one small. Yeah. So not too much for advertising, but say you're lazy yep. um, and don't want to spend a lot of time climbing. Places like Fit Foods, and I forgot what other one you mentioned, mm -hmm. where you can pre-buy this stuff. Yeah. Can you just like go in there and shop if you have a pre-order or how long does it take? Um, so Daily Harvest, it's the smoothies and soups. That's a it's all plant-based. They also they do harvest bowls and oatmeal bowls. Um, that I order online. It actually ships from New York, like with dry ice in a box. But like what? what? Again, don't judge me. Um, <laughs> so like so that that ship side. I think from the first time I ordered, it took like a week and a half to get in their gotcha. rotation. Fit Foods has a storefront where you can either go in and choose your meals. They have a wall of refrigerators. You can just go in, choose the meals that you want. They also have some tables. Like you can go and have lunch there. Um, and um, Or Josh has ordered online. You can email them your order and they will deliver it to you. I think it's any day but Friday or Saturday. As long as they have two people in the store, they'll bring it to you. Hmm. Regardless of where you go. Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I assume it's just they might. I mean, but they would bring it here if you. I mean, work or to your office. You're right down the block. No. Yeah, they've delivered here before. Yeah. yeah. And if you want to try out the fit foods, I've got some um, free meal cards. Just yeah. Yeah, we do have some free meal cards there. So we have thirty. <laughs> yeah, that'll make it a week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any other questions? Yeah. 
Do you think the percentages matter more or your overall calories matter percentages more? Percentages matter more. Okay. That's been my So if you're experience. on like a different calorie than your calories say yeah. you should be, I re yeah, would I you really nail those don't... percentages? Are you probably solid or would yes. you focus on, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and if you're eating way less than what your TDEE says you should be at, then like maybe look at that. But if you're like in the ballpark, I would really just look at those macros. And to, to piggyback on that, I agree with Elizabeth. A lot of times, like those numbers are going to be a lot different than what you're doing, like the calories. You start marching in that direction, you're going to start seeing changes in your body, uh, plus or minus up or down or whatever. But like when you arrive there, if you're hitting it consistently. Um, and then you can, uh, you'll, 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 it'll, be, it'll be distinct, but you'll probably know way before you get to the, you know, the perfect um, day that, that is the right answer for you, or the wrong answer. Yeah. Also, if you're like, I have no idea what the fuck is going on, I am available to sit down and go over this <laughs> stuff with you too. I know that it can be really overwhelming at first, you know, and it's, uh, I, I really, because I, I mean, like there are, there's just like, there's, there's so much coming at us from like all different directions, all about food and bodies, you know, and uh, yeah, it, it can't just be a lot. So, so yeah, so just know that, that like I am available to talk about this as well. You can email or set up an appointment for eMarket or something, I can give you my phone number, but I'm not going to calculate your macros. <laughs> 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 just like send you pictures of food, like yeah. Yeah, 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 what do you think this is, Elizabeth? It's 19 well, grams, but don't text me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, and with that, just thinking about the pictures of the food, not, don't send them to me. But, <laughs> but um, that is, if you're someone that you're like, there's no way I'm going to carry around a notebook or enter everything into my fitness pal, you can take pictures of every meal that you eat and then kind of, like, go back and be like, oh, okay. You know, like, that was my breakfast, my lunch, that was my handful of peanut butter cups, and, you know, or like, or whatever it is, you know, or my bag of popcorn. Yeah. But just, but just to be consistent with that and have it be ever. Yeah. So, I don't necessarily like the taste of most healthy foods. Yeah. So, one thing Josh and I were talking about in our check-in the other day, there's nothing wrong with adding herbs and spices as long as you aren't like over adding sodium, aren't Not adding a lot of all, yeah. You know, it's like it's okay to flavor shit up. Yeah, a little spice bit. that shit up. There because is it's also like if it's natural <laughs> herbs and spices, like you get some cut basil or rosemary or yeah, it makes hot sauce. Come on. Yeah, hour through it, but it's like. I don't think I eat plain anything, Me. you know, yeah. <laughs> I use no, herbs and like garlic like with everything. It's like, eat the healthy stuff and there's like zero flavor. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that, that is something that like I so often like I don't want to go out to dinner because I'm like whatever the healthy option is is like so plain. Yeah. Or well, also because I'm gluten free so it's like yeah. so often the gluten free option is like so boring, mm -hmm. you know. John yeah. has seriously one thick shelf of our entire fridge is various hot sauces. That's <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I think his taste buds are fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all the questions we have for uh, Coach E. Let's give her a round of applause. Yeah.